And welcome back to Fox 5's On the Hill live this Sunday morning. We want to now turn to where we are right now, Montgomery County, Maryland, where the Democratic primary election was certified after five weeks. The incumbent County Executive Mark Elrich beat David Blair by just 32 points. He now goes up against Republican nominee Reardon Sullivan in November. It is our pleasure to welcome back Mark Elrich to the Fox 5's On the Hill set uh, this Sunday morning. So 32 votes. Will you be able to personally thank all 32 people? Yeah, we're just deciding which 32 people. Because yeah. a lot of people claim to be the 32. But when, it's great. when you look back at this, and I yeah. know people in your position, you don't really care whether you win by thousands of votes or a couple of votes. You, you want to win. But when you f reflect on this, what does this primary election and this result, being as close as it was, tell you about how you are perceived in your job as the county executive? I think, in, you know, in some ways, and you got to remember, there's a polling data that shows very different perceptions until the bombardment of negative ads, right. which is important. But I think it shows that in, in some areas we do not convey well enough what we're doing. I mean, for somebody to say, like, you're not doing affordable housing when I've got a record spend on affordable housing is a bit, you know, disconnected. So do you view this as a performance issue or a communications issue? I think a lot of it's um, communications issue. I think that, um, you know, our performance is constrained by COVID, and anybody doesn't understand the effect that COVID had on budgets mm -hmm. isn't paying attention. But this last budget, which is the first time we had money with no tax increases and no federal money, we were able to do a lot of things we weren't able to do the first two years. Your colleague in Washington, D.C., Mary Muriel Bowser, told me that she had felt that COVID did kind of seize control of, of her term. Do you share that feeling? Are there things you wanted to do over your first term that you weren't able to do because you had to, you know, basically wrestle the, the COVID alligator, as it were? Well, yeah, absolutely. We, you know, we had thoughts about expanding, particularly like climate change. We were going to fill the offices and start the work on climate change. The council took a very conservative approach to budgeting because we didn't know what we were going to be getting in terms of either federal funds or tax receipts. So I had two years of same services budgets. So you can't do bold new things and do same services at the same time. We're out of that now. One of the things that has been uh, of, of a lot of conversation over the last four years is what to do about 270. You and Maryland Governor Larry Hogan have been at odds over, yep. over what to do on that road. Uh, just in the last 24 hours, the federal government apparently has turned the green light on for the project now moving forward. What is that going to mean? Do you agree with this decision to move ahead with uh, 270? I don't agree. I mean, I think they have selected the most incredibly expensive way of doing this, and there's no justification for it. I have never opposed this project from the beginning. I told the governor... You should start at the bridge. The, I'm perfectly happy to do the bridge. There's a solution on Upper 270. And in fact, the project yeah. now resembles a lot more like what you were talking about than what was originally opposed. But, you know, you see people in Virginia, they're doing this on 66 right now. You drive the Beltway in Virginia. They've got great express lanes on there. Why is it okay for Virginia, but people in Maryland still have to deal with this traffic? Well, the great expense lane, express lanes can be very expensive. And that's going to be an issue here. And it doesn't provide all the traffic relief that everybody talks about. If you're in an express lane and you can pay the fare, fair, mm -hmm. it's a lot better trip. If you're stuck in traffic, the studies don't show, for large segments, much improvement. And the way they've designed it, stopping at the ICC, is going to be a nightmare. One of the themes throughout your primary campaign against David Blair was the economy and, and, and business development as all. Well. When you first ran four years ago, a lot of people viewed you as anti-business <clears throat> uh, because of some of the stances you had had on the council. Northern Virginia and Montgomery County have been neck and neck on trying to get some of these businesses to come to their jurisdiction. Yeah. Northern Virginia has won a lot of those battles. What are you prepared to do if you are reelected to maybe put Montgomery County on a more of a higher plateau than it has been on, you know, businesses like Amazon, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, ones that have been choosing to go over to Northern Virginia. So I th we're going to have a hard time in the defense industry because of Pentagon requirements for how close you have to be to the Pentagon. So I don't anticipate big wins there. I think that we're going to do a really remarkable job on life sciences, which is our strength. Mm -hmm. It's the defense was never our strength, but life sciences is. 
you know, we've got plans with the University of Maryland for a first graduate center here mm -hmm. focused on life sciences. Mm -hmm. We're working with WMATA to do a joint development okay. that White Flint focused on life sciences, so we're going to grow the economy. You know, one of the things people talk about all over Montgomery County is housing. And it's not just low-income housing that people are struggling to find. Middle-class families are getting priced out of neighborhoods, which used to be the staple of Montgomery County. What do you do about this? Because your success is causing a problem in the housing market right now. Their people are priced out of a people where, place where they want to stay. It's a little bit ironic when somebody runs a campaign saying everybody's leaving and then your housing prices are soaring yeah. through the ceiling. So how do you fix that? Because so, it is a problem. So, I mean, it, is, it is a problem. You know, our housing, what the government does in terms of encouraging housing is a very narrow band. We used to call it housing, MPDU program, moderate price dwelling units for teachers, firefighters, and, uh, and police officers. That's no longer the people who are the only people who need housing. We've got a band well below that gets no housing support. And there's a big gap in what the developers are building between the MPDUs and what they do in market. Mm -hmm. There's over a thousand dollar gap from an MPDU unit in a one bedroom and a market rate unit in Bethesda. So if you're not low enough income to get an MPDU, you can't get into a market building. We've got to require broader ranges of housing. All right, we have so many topics to cover. We haven't gotten into uh, you know, uh, criminal justice at all, so we're going to have to have you come back. You know, I'm uh, coming back. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll continue this conversation at a later time. He is Mark Elwood. He's the incumbent Montgomery County executive and uh, now the nominee for that party in November. We thank you so much yeah, for being you. here. Good to have you back. And we